Hello everyone. Hi. <laughs> we are doing trig today. We're doing some trig. Please share this live with some people, guys. If you know that they're either in grade 11 or grade 12. Hello, thank you for joining guys. If you know that they maybe need some help with trig, please share this live with them. I'm just going to give it a few minutes just for some more people to join. Yes, I will post it on my link. Um, hopefully it will save. It happened the other day that one of my lives didn't save. Um, TikTok is supposed to save it and I don't know why sometimes it doesn't work, but yes, absolutely. I do grade 10, yes, but we're not doing grade 10 today. We did a grade 10 live, I think, last week. <clears throat> Please share with as many people as possible. And if you are here to do some grade 11 and 12 trig, let me know what section of trig you need help with. Um, is it trig equations, trig identities, maybe trig reduction formula? Yeah, let me know what you guys actually want me to do specifically because trig is such a broad topic. Like there's so many things that we can do for trig. So should we do trig equations? I know that lots of people struggle with trig equations. So maybe that's a good idea. I'll show you some trig equations here at the bottom. Number eight, we can do some of those. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments what section you want me to do. Compound angles, all right. But now compound angles can be can be a part of so many different topics so I still need to know which topic I must do and then we can work some compound angles into this all right please share the live with some more people guys only one person has shared please can some more people share this <clears throat> Yeah, I thought so. Lots of people don't like general solution, but it's actually, yeah, I I think that I have a nice way. Thanks, guys. Thank you for sharing. Um, I think I have a nice way of explaining it. I don't know. My classes usually do quite well in trig equations, so maybe I should do a couple of examples on that. Um, but yeah, it is a difficult section because there are so many different things that you can do. So lots of people see a question and they don't even know where to start. So we can look at that. Those past year papers, no, this is just a worksheet that I have. Um, it's a worksheet that is in the teacher's guide of the textbooks that we use, which is the Platinum Maths. So I usually just do some of these examples with my classes. So I thought we could look at some of these. Um, yeah, there's an advanced worksheet as well. Um, you can look at some of these equations as well. Can we do general solution? Yes, this is for pure maths. I'm just going to give it another minute and then we're going to get started. Thank you for the likes and the shares and the follows, guys. I really do appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to do um, two trig equations and one reduction formula. Grade 10, so I can tell, I haven't, I'm not sure when yet. Um, my schedule is different every week because of extramural stuff. So as soon as I know, as soon as I know when I have time to go live, I will post a live event on my profile. So please follow me so that you can get notifications when I do go live. Um, any tips for preparing on a test regarding measurement? You have to make sure that you know your formulas. Absolutely, you need to make sure. Sorry, there's a guy outside trying to sell fish. So he's shouting about all the the different fish that he has on sale. We're not interested in that today. Um, yeah, for measurement, you need to know all your formulas, and you also need to know how to 
change the formulas if you have to um, calculate variations of the basic shapes. So sometimes you're doing like a cylinder that's open at the top, so then you must take out one of the circle part of the equation. That's the kind of thing that I mean. So you have to make sure that you know the formulas, but you also need to be able to change the formula based on the context of the question. How would they mark you? I'm not sure what you mean. In measurement. Okay, guys, I'm going to get started in like 10 seconds. In measurement, usually they give you a mark for the formula. They give you a mark for where you are substituting values into the formula. And then they give you, maybe they'll give you multiple marks for that. It depends on how complicated the working is. And then you'll get a mark for the answer. Okay, guys, we are going to get started. Thank you for all the follows. General solution. I do have videos from last year, and I have some grade 12 videos from this year as well um, that you can go check on my YouTube. Yes, but I don't actually have TikTok videos on it, but I have a couple of, um, there are a couple of YouTube videos on my channel you can go check. Okay, now let's take a look, guys. We said that we're going to do two general solution questions, and then we are going to do one reduction formula question. All right, I'm just trying to find a nice general solution question here. I'm not going to do one of the super basic ones. Um, I actually want to do one that is a little bit more difficult. So the instruction will just say solve for x or whatever the variable is. It's not always going to be x. It could be something else as well. All right, we're going to do the first one is going to be 2 sine x times tan x minus tan x equal to 0. And they want us to answer x has to lie between negative 360 and 360. Now, guys, whenever you are solving... A, a trig equation, right? Whenever you're doing a trig equation, you are always going to have to do a general solution. Lots of people think that if it just says that if it says solve for x here, you don't have to do a general solution. Guys, you always have to do a general solution for any trig equation. Always, 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 you have to do a general solution. So I'm going to write down all the steps that we're going to follow, and then we're actually going to do those steps. What you want to get in a trig equation, just like when you are solving for x in a normal equation, right? You want to get x on the one side and a number on the other side. It's similar to this. With a trig equation, you want to get sine x equal to a number. You can't always get it equal to a number. I'll show you what to do in that case. But this is what we're aiming for. Or we want cos x equal to a number or we want tan x equal to a number. Now, what can also happen is that your angle can be more complicated. It won't always be x. It can be a 2x. It can be in brackets like an x plus 15. It's not always just an x. Okay, but essentially what I mean by this is that our first step is going to be to get the trig ratio with its angle on the left-hand side equal to everything else. Okay, now sometimes in order to do that, you need to do various things. In this case, we're going to factorize. All right, we're going to have to factorize in this case. Now, whenever you are seeing multiple terms in a trig equation like we have here, we have one term and then a second term, you need to start thinking, can I factorize? All right, so I'm going to make that note at the top. Multiple terms Then you need to ask yourself, can I factorize? <clears throat> now guys I know that when you are proving identities right when you have to show that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side your teachers will often tell you whenever you see tan change it to sine over cos but if I change this tan to sine over cos or that tan to sine over cos it's actually not going to help me all right so I'm not going to do that in this case and guys even if you do that you won't get a mark all right, you are going to have to factorize. Now, I hope that we all can notice that we have a tan x 
in both of these terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out tan x as a common factor, tan x. Remember, what do we do when we're taking out a common factor? We actually are dividing each term by that common factor. Because what is factorizing? Factorizing is the opposite of multiplying out. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So when we factorize, we actually divide. So I'm going to say this term, 2 sine x tan x. If I divide by tan x, what's left? 2 sine x. So that is what is going to go into my bracket, 2 sine x. Minus, because there's a minus in between my two terms. My second term is tan x. Now what is tan x divided by tan x? Tan x divided by tan x, anything divided by itself is 1. And that is then equal to 0. Now, guys, we've gone from multiple terms to one term. That is the purpose of factorizing. Okay, so I'm going to say again, in a trig equation, whenever you have multiple terms, see whether you can factorize. And most of the time, that is what you will have to do. Sometimes you might have to use an identity in order to get something that you can factorize. I'll, sh I'll show you an example of that. But in this case, we could just take our tan x straight away. That was quite nice. Now, guys, we need to remember what this, what is actually happening here. I have tan x multiplied by a bracket equal to zero. Now, the only way for a product of two factors here, the tan x and this bracket, to equal zero is if one of those two brackets or two factors, one of those two things is equal to zero. So if tan x is zero, for example, then I'm going to have zero multiplied by a bracket. And we all know that zero multiplied by anything is just zero. So if tan x is equal to zero, that will work. That will make this product equal to zero. But there's another option. If this bracket is equal to zero, that will also make the whole product equal to zero. So if I say two sine x minus 1 is equal to 0. That will also make this whole equation true here at the top. Hello. <laughs> Gugu, is this Gugu in my grade 8 class? <laughs> All right, so tan x equals 0, and then 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0. Now, guys, we have actually got two different trig equations here. We have tan x equal to 0, which we're going to have to solve, and then we have 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0, which we're going to have to solve as well. Now, this one, whenever you're working with 0, it's a bit difficult because normally what we do... <laughs> Hi, Google. <laughs> Thanks for joining. This is grade 11 work, though, so it's a bit advanced, but it's very nice of you to join. <laughs> Okay, step two. So we have sine or cos or tan equal to whatever. All right, there we have tan equal to zero and we have almost have two sine x minus one equal to zero. We're still going to have to do some work, right? In order to get it like this, we must make sine x the subject. We're going to have to move the minus one over to that side. It's going to become positive one. And then we're going to have to move this 2 over to that side as well. So we're going to get sine x equal to 1 over 2. Right. Hello. Yes, I notice you. All right. So now we have two equations that are written in this form. Okay. Our first step is done. It took us a while. All right. It took us a while to get to that point, but that was the first step. We need to get sine or cos or tan of x or whatever the angle is equal to a number. All right, we have that now. Step two is going to be to find the reference angle. Now, different teachers have a different approach to finding the reference angle. I always teach my students something that I think will work for everyone. So I say that the reference angle is always, or something that will work for all examples, I mean. I say that the reference angle is always an acute angle, so you have to ignore the minus if there is a minus. Okay, I'll see if that comes up in any of the examples that I'm going to do. You're going to have to ignore that minus. So... <clears throat> Let me just add here by pressing shift. So this is now on the calculator. We're going to use our calculators and then sign 
or causal tan. I think that might be off screen. It's just, just on screen. Okay. So that's what we're going to do for the next step. Now, when you do that here with your tan, I'm just going to show you. You're going to press shift and then tan. And then you're going to type the number that's on the other side. So zero. You press equals and you get zero. That means that our reference angle for this one is zero. Okay. Which is a bit strange, but we can talk about that now. The reference angle is zero degrees. There we go. Okay, next one, we can do the same thing over here. To get that reference angle, we can do shift, oh, sorry, shift, sign, and now the number that's on the other side is a half, so you can type in a half, you can type in 0 0.5 if you want to, it's the same thing, and the answer there for the reference angle is 30 degrees. Okay, that is step two, step two done. Now, step three, you are going to choose the correct quadrants. Choose the correct quadrants. I'll just write quads here. Based on the sign of the number. Okay, so what I mean by that is we have two different equations here, so we're going to have to do it for both of them. You look at the line where you actually have your sine or cos or tan equal to a number, all right? And that number will always either be a positive number or a negative number. Now, if it's a zero, it's a bit different, but if it's zero, you are going to just assume that it's a plus, that it's positive, okay? I know that zero technically isn't positive, but for the purpose of this, we can think of zero as positive. So now, remember, what do we have that tells us what all of the different trig ratios are in the different quadrants? The cost diagram. Some people say cost diagram. Other people have different um, ways of remembering it. So my math teacher at high school had quite a cute little rhyme. She said, all sinners tan costumeless. <laughs> so that was quite quite interesting that helped me to remember it so this is quadrant one which is all so all of the trig ratios are positive in the first quadrant quadrant two is sine for sinners <laughs> quadrant three is tan so tan is positive in the third quadrant the others are negative and in the fourth quadrant only cos is positive and all the others are negative all right so cost some people just say cost diagram so now you're going to look at this tan x is equal to zero. Now remember, I just said zero technically is not positive or negative, but for the purposes of this work, we can just say that zero is positive, all right? So then we're going to say in which quadrants is tan positive in quadrant one and three. So that is what we are going to work with. So I normally just draw a little cast diagram on the side, and I put in where is it positive in quadrants one and three. So someone's asking, is this grade 11 or 12? It's both. So you learn this in grade 11 for the first time, but then we expand on it in grade 12 by adding some new identities and you have to be able to do this in grade 12 as well. So it's 11 and 12. All right. Then for the other one here, we have sine equal to a positive number. So in which quadrants is sine positive? First and second, the first and second quadrants. So I'm going to work in the first and second quadrants. All right, so that's step three done. Now, step four is going to be write a GS, a general solution for each quad, each quadrant that we've now filled in on these little diagrams, right? We're going to write the general solution for each of those using the RA, the reference angle. Okay, now this is where things start getting interesting. All right, now I'm actually going to do the sine one first so that you can see how it works. Then we're going to move over to the tan one. So for the sine one, right, we're going to do a quadrant one solution and a quadrant two solution, quadrant one and two. So you can write it like this. You can say Q1 you don't have to. You can actually just say whatever. You don't have to do, do the quadrant one and quadrant two. I do it like that. Now, guys, in the first quadrant, right, you always have an angle between zero and 90. 
So you are just going to use your reference angle in the first quadrant. Okay, if you have to write a quadrant one solution, it's always just going to be the reference angle. So my quadrant one solution is going to be my angle is x. x equals 30 degrees. Now, because it's supposed to be a general solution, remember we're working with trig graphs and trig graphs, um, trig graphs repeat every however many degrees, every period, right? A sine graph has a period of 360 degrees. So it goes, it starts at zero, goes up to one, down to zero, down to negative one, back to zero, almost like the starting point. That's after 360 degrees. Then it repeats that pattern. Then again, it repeats that pattern. So that is why we say plus 360n. Some teachers write N360, that's fine, it's the same thing. I prefer just saying 360N. And now we have to say that N is an element of integers. So that means when you start at zero, after 360 degrees, you're going to be back at zero. After another 360 degrees, you're going to be back at zero again. After another 360, you're going to be back at zero again. All right, so that is, let me see, okay, but why is there a positive at A and S next to the sine X half? So here I wrote in which quadrants sine is positive because this is saying sine X is a positive number. And the only reason for sine to be equal to a positive number is if that angle is either in quadrant one or two. So that is why I put a plus in quadrant one and a plus in quadrant two. It's because sine is positive in those two quadrants. All right, that is my first general solution. My second general solution is now in quadrant two. Now, guys, in quadrant two, you're not going to have an angle of 30 degrees. OK, in quadrant one, you'll have an angle of 30 degrees. In quadrant two, the same angle that we'll have there is actually going to be at 180 minus 30 degrees. So in the second quadrant, you always take your 180 degrees, that line, minus your reference angle. OK, so here we're going to say in quadrant two, x is 180 minus 30 plus 360 n. Now I've written n element of z once. I don't have to write it again. You only need to write it the first time you use it. Now I'm just going to simplify this because we can work out what that is. 180 minus 30 is 150 degrees plus 360 n. All right, guys, that means that sine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to a half, right? That will work in this case. Sine of 30 is going to be equal to a half. But sine of 150, this angle, is also going to be equal to a half. Let's see if that's true. Sine 30 is, in fact, equal to a half. And sine 150, that is also equal to a half. But then, if we add 360 degrees to 30 and to 150, those values will also be equal to a half. And even if I minus 360 degrees, right, n can be integers. An integer or integers are also negative numbers. So you can also minus 360 from it, all right? And then that will give you um, a value for x that will make sine equal to a half. Someone's asking what grade I'm in. I'm a teacher. <laughs> I'm no longer in any grade. All right, so that is what we're doing for the sine half of this question. Now let's get to the tan half of the question. Now guys, tan is slightly different because the period of a tan graph is not 360 degrees, like for a sine or a cos graph. The period of a tan graph is 180. So when we are looking at this cast diagram, actually I'm just gonna write it a bit bigger here at the top. Right. If we have this plus the sorry, that's a very skew line that I drew there, but you get the idea. All right. We said that tan is positive in quadrants one and three. All right. So we have quadrant one over here. Now, if I am doing tan, I'm going to have to write one plus 180 n. For sine, it was plus 360 n because a sine graph repeats itself every 360 degrees. A tan graph repeats itself every 180 degrees. So now if you're starting here at any angle in your first quadrant and you add 180 degrees to it, you're going to get to quadrant three anyway. All right. That is the interesting thing about tan. Tan actually repeats every 180 degrees. So guys, the nice thing about tan is because of that, 
we can actually ignore the third and fourth quadrant. Because if we have an angle in quadrant one and we add 180 degrees to it, which is what we're going to write in our general solution anyway, you'll see now when we write it down, we're going to get that angle in the third quadrant anyway. So we don't have to write it. So when you see tan, you must actually be excited because it's less work. You don't have to write as much stuff. Okay, so I'll show you now how that works when we write it down. So you're getting that tan x is equal to zero. All right, so the reference angle is zero degrees. We work that out on the calculator. So now we're going to do our quadrant one solution. We're going to say this angle is x. So x is equal to zero degrees. That's the angle in the first quadrant, right? It's actually the angle over here, but we're saying first quadrant, all right? So this is zero degrees. And now because the period of a tan graph is 180 degrees, we're going to say plus 180n. I teach grades 8 to 12. All right, so we say zero plus 180n. Now, guys, if I am at zero, right, and I add 180, that's going to get me to 180, all right? So I actually already have the solution. I don't have to write the solution as well. I am going to write it down so that you guys can see that it is the same thing. All right. But you don't have to write down this last bit. So this quadrant three part, you don't have to write down. I just want you to see why it works that way. For the third quadrant, right? For your third quadrant, you always say 180 degrees plus your reference angle. So 180 plus zero. And then plus 180n. Now what is 180 plus 0? It's actually just 180. Now guys, that's what I was saying. These two general solutions actually give you the same thing. This first general solution, your quadrant 1 general solution, actually already includes this one. Because if you are saying 0 plus 180, doesn't that just give you 180? So you don't have to write this quadrant three solution at all. You only ever have to write the first, or if tan was negative, you would have to do the second quadrant one. You never are going to have to do the quadrant three and quadrant four solutions because tan repeats itself every 180 degrees. All right. Now, guys, in some cases, we're going to have to do step five. And in this case, we're going to have to. They are telling us that X now has to lie between negative 360 and positive 360. So we can't actually leave it at the general solution. All right. So step five is only going to be done if they give you an interval for X. So I'm going to write here, if an interval... is given, then you are going to do step five. If it just said solve for x and this is the question and that wasn't there, right? We would be done. This would be the final answer. But now they've added and they've said x now has to lie between negative 360 and 360. Okay, so if an interval is given, you are going to sub in whole number values for in to get specific solutions. I'm just going to take a sip of my water. Um, someone's asking here about circle geometry. I have lots and lots of um, videos on my YouTube on circle geometry. You can just look for the playlist, grade 11 Euclidean geometry, and it's all there. I did lots of um, videos. All my lessons on that topic from last year are on there. Okay, guys, so now we're going to have to do this, step five. Now, for step five, you don't actually have to write down any working. 
Okay, you can just do it on the calculator. We have three general solutions here. I'm just going to rewrite them. We have x equals 0 plus 180n. All right, that's one general solution that we have there. Then we have x equals 30 plus 360n. All right, and then we have the third one here, x equals 150 plus 360n. So we have three different general solutions here. We are now going to have to sub in whole number values for n, and whatever we get as an answer for x, we need to check whether it actually falls in this interval between negative 360 and 360. All right, that is what we're going to have to do now. So guys, I always start with n equals 0. All right, so n equals 0. That is the first one that you're going to try. Then you're going to sub in n equals 1. After that, you're going to sub in n equals negative 1. Then, if all of these values gave you values that fall in your, in your interval that they've given you, you are then going to try is 2 and put n equals negative 2. All right, you don't often have to go further than, than that, but if you could, then you would sub in n equals 3 and n equals negative 3. Now, guys, I'm just going to show you, all right? I am going to start with this first general solution, and I'm going to sub in all of these values until I get values that don't lie in my interval. I'm going to get ready here to write down answers. I'm going to write, therefore, x is equal to, and now I'm going to list the values that work. Okay, so I'm going to start with my first one, 0 plus 180n. I'm going to make n equal to 0. Now, of course, some of this you don't have to type into the calculator, right? We know, obviously, that this is going to be x equals 0. Now, guys, does this fall into my interval? Remember, what is the interval? Between negative 360 and 360. 0 lies between negative 360 and 360, so that works. So I'm going to list that. Okay, now I'm going to use the arrow button on my calculator. I'm going to go back to that 0. I'm going to change it to a 1. What do I get? 180. That also lies in the interval that they gave us. Now I'm going to go back to change my 1 to negative 1. I'm going to get negative 180. Guys, my phone is busy overheating. I just got a notification. So let me just grab a little fan. Maybe turn down the volume for a short while because the fan is going to be quite loud. Oh goodness, where is this fan now? If the live just switches off, just wait for me. I'll be back in a, in a few minutes. Um, oh dear, I don't know where this fan is now. Um, okay, let me just see here. Yeah, it's very hot. Okay, I'm just going to take my cover off. Sorry about my finger in front of the camera. Oh, it's very hot. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm back. I'm so, so sorry. I don't know if you heard me saying that my phone was overheating. It's a consistent problem and I'm not quite sure how to solve it. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to give it a couple seconds for everyone to join again. I think some people might have left. Oh, it's very frustrating. While we're waiting, does anyone else have a Samsung, Samsung Galaxy S21? that keeps overheating. I like I can't go live for longer than half an hour and then the phone is like super hot and all my apps close. It's very frustrating. <laughs> so I'm really sorry about that guys. Okay, we're going to get back into it. So what we were doing is we got these three general solutions and we are now trying to find values between negative 360 and positive 360 by subbing in values for n. All right, so we started with zero. Then I changed it and that gave me an answer of zero. Then I changed n to one. That gave me an answer of 180. I changed n to negative one. That gave me an answer of negative 180. Now guys, we're still in the interval. So let's keep going. Let's now change it to two and negative 2. Now, if it's 2, then I'm getting an answer of 360, and that actually does still fall in my interval. All right, so let's change it then to negative 2, and I'm getting negative 360. Okay, now guys, those are the end points of my interval. So 
if I do 3 and negative 3, the values are going to be either too big or too small. So I'm not going to keep going from there. All right, next up, we're now going to use this general solution. Hello. <laughs> My baby just got home from school. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry guys okay we're just gonna finish up here so 30 plus 360 in so now again we're gonna go 0 1 negative 1 and so on so I'm th saying 30 plus 360 times 0 that gives me 30 that does lie in my interval so I'm gonna write that down oh I'm running out of space here okay I'm just gonna carry on underneath now I'm gonna do 30 plus 360 times 1 now guys that gives me a value that's outside of the interval so let's try negative 1, negative 330, that is within the interval, so I'm going to write that one down. If I try 2 and negative 2, it will give me values that are either too big or too small, so I'm not going to do that. All right, now I'm going to try my third general solution. I'm going to do 0 for n first, that gives me 150, that does lie in my interval. Then I'm going to try n equals 1, and I think you can already tell that it's going to give me a value that's too big. All right, so 5, 10, that's not going to work. Now let's try negative 1, negative 2, 10, that does give me a value in my interval. And there we go. All right, that is it. Yes, it is long. Now all of this you don't have to write down. Okay, all of this you just do on the calculator and usually they don't give you questions with such a big interval because it's very repetitive and they just kind of, you're just kind of, you know, punching numbers on the calculator. So you don't usually get as many solutions as this, um, but yeah, you need to be prepared for if you do. Okay, I am just going to look at one more example. Unfortunately, that's all that we have time for today and my phone is probably going to overheat again. So let's just do one more example and I am looking at this one and this is something that comes up quite often because 2x minus 80 degrees is equal to, this is trig, this is equal to sine of x plus 20 degrees. Now the previous example was very long because we had tan and we had sine. Now in this case we have cos and sine as well but guys now I can't take out a cos or a sine or something. I don't actually have a, a what's the word a common factor. So in this case where you have a cos equal to a sine and you have different angles what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to change one of them so I'm going to change my sine to a cos. Now I want you guys to remember your co-ratios, right? That cos x is equal to sine of 90 minus x. Now this is actually what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this concept that cos of x is equal to sine of 90 minus x, right? Or if you want to go the other way around, sine of x is equal to cos of 90 minus x. Okay, I'm actually going to change this sign to a cos of 90 minus whatever this angle is. Right, which is a bit tricky because we have a complicated angle. We don't just have an x. If this was just sine x, I could change it very easily to cos 90 minus x. Now my x, my angle that I have is more complicated. It's an x plus 20. So I have to do 90 minus this whole angle. Right, but sine of x plus 20, I'm going to change to cos of 90 minus x plus 20. Like that. All right, so sine, I'm changing to cos of 90 minus whatever the angle was. Now I'm just quickly going to multiply this minus into the brackets just to make it a bit simpler. I have 90 minus x and then minus 20. So if I simplify that, I'm getting an answer of 70 minus x. 
So this is saying that cos of 2x minus 80 is equal to cos of 70 minus x. Now guys, this is a special type of trig equation where you don't have a number here. So you can't find the reference angle by doing shift cos like we did in the previous question. In the previous question, we typed in shift sine of a half and that gave us the reference angle. In this question, they are giving us the reference angle and the reference angle is what we have in brackets here, which is a bit strange, right? Because it has an X in it, but I'm going to show you now how we get rid of that X. So here, the reference angle is in fact 70 degrees minus X. Okay, now I want you guys to notice that this is a positive cause, right? There's no minus in front of this cause. This is positive. So we need to look at our original equation. I'm actually going to rewrite it here. You don't have to, but just so that we can see it in one written outline. Cos is equal to this. Now, cos is equal to a positive expression, right? There's no minus there in front. This is a positive cos expression. Now, guys, in which quadrants is cos positive? This is now where you're doing your step three, right? Step one was getting cos of an angle equal to cos of an angle. All right, that was essentially our step one. Step two is getting your reference angle. In this case, the reference angle is just what we have in brackets there. Step three is now choosing the correct quadrants that we're going to work in. So here, in which quadrants is cos positive? In quadrants one and four. So we're going to have a quadrant one solution and a quadrant four solution. All right, so our quadrant one solution now, guys, you always start your quadrant one. Yes, well done, four and one. You always start your, your quadrant solutions by writing the angle that you have on the left. In the previous question, it was easy. It was just sine of x and tan of x, so we just wrote x. Now it's a more complex angle here. We have a 2x minus 80. So that is what I have to write down. Now, my first quadrant... In the first quadrant, I always work with the reference angle, which is 70 minus x. I need to remember, what is the period of cos? 360 degrees. So I have to say plus 360 in, in element of z. Now, guys, this is an equation. We have x's on both sides. I'm going to have to get all my x's on this side and all my numbers on that side. So here I have 2x. Here I have minus x. What do I do when I'm moving a negative x over? It needs to become positive x. So I'm going to say 2x plus x is 3x equal to, here I have a 70 degree angle. Here I have minus 80. When I move it, it has to become plus 80. Now 70 plus 80 is 150 degrees plus 360 in. But I have to have x equals, right? That's how our general solution always needs to end. It always has to have just an x on its own equal to everything else. So I need to get rid of this 3. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to divide through by 3. So I'm going to get an x there. 150 divided by 3 is 50 degrees. And 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees. So we write 120 in. Okay, so that is a more complicated one. Guys, that was just our quadrant one solution. We're getting this general solution from our quadrant one. We still need to do quadrant four. Now, this is going to be a bit more complicated because what do we do in the fourth quadrant? To get any angle in the fourth quadrant, you say 360 minus the reference angle. So again, I'm going to take my 2x minus 80. That is equal to 360 degrees minus my reference angle, which is 70 minus x. And that, again, needs to have a plus 360n. Like I said before, we always do a general solution for a trig equation, even if they don't mention GS or general solution in the question. You always have to do a general solution. All right, before I start moving things around, I'm going to multiply these brackets out. So I'm going to leave that side as it is. I'm going to do 360 minus 70 plus x plus 360n. 
like that. Now I can move all the x's to this side and all the numbers to the other side. So I have a 2x. Here I have a plus x. When I move this plus x, it becomes minus x. And 2x minus x is just x. 360 minus 70 is 290 degrees, but now I must add this 80 degrees that's coming from that side. So 360 minus 70 is 290 plus 80 is 370 plus 360 in. So those are the two general solutions that we are getting for this equation. So the important thing that we did here Guys, you can't say that if you have an equation like this, that the reference angle is x plus 20. It has to have the same trig ratios. It has to be cos equals cos or sine equals sine. All right, so only once you get to this step where you have cos of an angle equals to cos of an angle, can you say that that second angle is actually your reference angle. Okay, so those were two... Um, complicated I think trig equations that we went through now I know that I said that I'm going to do a reduction formula question as well unfortunately I don't have time to do that now and my phone is about to overheat again so I'm gonna have to leave it at that guys I did um reduction formula with my grade 11s last year the video is on my youtube like the full lesson where i explained everything in detail like i do when i go live so please go take a look at my youtube i try and organize all my videos into playlists so if you are looking for grade 11 trig you can go onto my youtube you can go to the playlists tab and all the different playlists are there you can look for grade 11 trig and all of my lessons are there and you can go watch whichever lesson you are needing help with um, and I'm also going to keep making like short TikTok videos, but obviously I can't explain in as much detail in like a three minute video than I can in a longer YouTube lesson. So yeah, there are resources there for you. There are also lots of notes on my Google Drive, which you can also find if you click the link in my bio. So you can go take a look at that as well. Okay, guys, I hope that this was helpful. Sorry again about the going away for a while. <laughs> Um, yeah, I suppose I need to get a new phone at some point because it's very frustrating. But thank you so much for joining, guys. And best of luck if you have tests and exams coming up now in the next couple weeks. Um, let me know. You can comment on my videos if you need help with anything specific. And I will try and create some content for you. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your Monday.